بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله. I'm going to speak to you brothers and sisters today about a topic which I think is very very important subhanallah because I think a lot of people take it very lightly and I think the implications of this are actually very heavy indeed, very serious and in certain situations I think the person doesn't realize it but they are playing with their religion. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers that don't raise your voices over the voice of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in case your deeds are rendered null and void and you don't even know. This is a very stern warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it shows, it's a proof that there are certain actions that when you do them they can render all of your deeds null and void and not knowing is not an excuse. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi, wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that He will not forgive anybody who associates partners with Him. If you give the whole world in charity, it will not be accepted from you if you are associating partners with Allah. Now the reason why I mention this is the seriousness of what I'm about to speak or talk about each and every single person here today, it will either apply to you or it will apply guaranteed to somebody that you know, either a member of your family or a member of your friends. I'm going to be speaking, inshallah, about going to the cinema and watching movies and the serious implications that this have for the Muslim. The first issue and I'm going to mention a number of issues bi idhnillahi ta'ala and I'm going to bring evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah I'm just going to give you the English translation of the reference that I give but I'll give you the reference inshallah you can go back and you can uh, reference it yourself as well I'm going to mention a number of issues and how this is related to watching movies but also more specifically to going to the cinema if this doesn't apply to you, as I said, I'm sure everybody knows somebody here who it applies to from amongst their family or friends. The duty is upon you to go back and relay this message to them. As the Prophet ﷺ told us on his farewell, uh, his farewell message on his final sermon, it may be that those who you relay this information to understand it better than you do. So it's our duty to, under, to relay this information. It may be that those who we tell, they understand it and they act upon it better than we will. The first issue relating to visiting the cinema and other issues or other areas like this, bowling, etc. is the element of free mixing. The element of free mixing that takes place between the males and the females, the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Muslims or commands the people in Surah Al-Nur. Surah number 24, ayah 30 to 31. And he tells the Prophet alayhi salam, tell the believing men to lower their gazes and protect their private parts. That is pure for them. Verily, Allah is all aware of what they do. And tell the believing women to lower their gazes as well. This is a command in this surah to both the males and the females to lower their gazes, to avoid looking at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. Ali ibn, Ta ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, the great companion Ali, in a hadith which is reported by Al-Hakim, by Imam Ahmad and also by Al-Tirmidhi, he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, O oh Ali, do not follow one glance with another, for you will be forgiven for the first, but not for the second. Let's put these, this ayah and this hadith together now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the believing men and believing women to lower their gazes because that is purer for them, to protect their private parts. Ali radiallahu an is saying that the Prophet alayhi salam told me, O oh Ali, do not follow one look with another because you will, be forbid, you will be forgiven for the first look, but the second look you won't be forgiven, i.e. it's going to be a sin. When you look at these uh, environments, you know, we haven't even got into the cinema yet. We haven't even watched the movie yet. And subhanallah, we are just queuing to buy tickets. 
and look at the element of free mixing that's going on now. The men are looking at the women and there's no element of shame, it's just one look and then she will look back at him and he will look away and pretend that he hasn't seen her. And then he will look again and they will just play games. It's like a, a tennis, look, that, she looks, he looks, she looks, he looks and they are looking one at after the other, imagine how many sins they are incurring. Because the first sin, the first look, that was forgiven. But any look after that, that is forbidden because she is haram to him and he is haram to her, except with nikah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he told us in a hadith which is recorded by Al-Bukhari, the adultery of the eyes is the sight, i.e. to look at a forbidden thing. The adultery of the tongue is the talk. And then the inner self wishes and desires and the private parts testify to that or they deny it. So the adultery, how does adultery start? How does this, uh, this fornication start? It starts with a look. It starts with a look. And a look, he looks at her, she looks at him and they smile. And then they exchange uh, words. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the inner self, it desires. Then that desire, that flame is ignited. And then the private parts, they either testify to it, so they go and they fornicate, or they deny it, and they don't fornicate. But subhanAllah, look at how strong the words of the Prophet ﷺ were. The fornication of the eyes is the sight. Of the tongue, it is the speech. And subhanAllah, that leads to this desire, which is then either confirmed by the private part or it is denied. So, we are only on the issue of free mixing, but look at how seriously Islam takes this issue of free mixing. But the Muslims today, we think it's just something very minor, something very, very minor. You know, she's just a friend. There is no friendship like this in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ala ya'lamu man khalaqa wa huwa latif al khabir. Should Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created you, doesn't he know better? The one who created you, doesn't he know what is right for you? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet alayhi salam have forbidden this element of free mixing. They have forbidden this element of just openly talking to those who are not your sisters or your aunties or your mothers or your grandmothers, etc because of the evil that that would, which it leads to. Shaitan, you may be pious, she may be pious, but shaitan is not pious. You may be practicing and you want good, and she may be practicing and want good, but bring you two together, and who is the third shaitan? The Prophet ﷺ, he told us that two people are never together and they are non-mahrams, except that the third amongst them is shaitan. So you may be a good person, she may be a good person, but wallahi shaitan is not a good person. He is your enemy and he wants you to commit fornication. He wants you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ghafir, Surah number 40, Ayah number 19, Allah knows the fraud of the eyes and all that the breasts conceal. Allah knows the fraud of our eyes and everything that our breasts conceal. Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, the one whom the Prophet alayhi salatu salam made dua for him, he took him in his cloak and said, oh Allah give him understanding of this religion. He was the shaykh of the Quran from amongst the companions. Ibn Abbas, he speaks about the tafsir of this ayah. Allah knows the fraud of the eyes and everything that the breasts conceal. Ibn Abbas says, he says it refers to a man who visits the house of a family which includes a beautiful woman and she passes him by. When the members of the family are not watching him, he looks at her. But when they are alert, he lowers his gaze. So imagine this, you go or the man goes to visit this person in his, in his house. Either he's been called for a meal or there might be some other purpose for his visit. And he's sitting there and a beautiful woman either passes by or she enters into the room. So when the men folk are not looking, he is looking at her, appreciating her beauty, desiring her. But then when they are looking, he lowers his gaze. This is fraud of his eyes. His eyes are fraudulent. 
So Ibn Abbas says when they are watching, he, when they are not watching, he gazes at her. But when they are observing him, he lowers his gaze. And then Ibn Abbas continues, he says, Allah knows that in his heart he wishes to see her naked and if he could, he would commit adultery with her. This is the adultery of his heart. This is what his breast is concealing. So the fraud of his eyes is looking at her and then looking away. And what his heart is concealing, Allah knows that he desires to commit adultery with her. This is in Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Ikhwani, when you go to the cinema, when you go to these areas and people are just queuing up to buy the tickets, there's no fraud involved, subhanAllah. There's no sideways glances. People are openly looking at one another. There is no fraud involved. There is no hidden glances. The people are looking one at the other and there is no shame. It's like a cattle market. Oh, isn't she fit? Isn't he hot? SubhanAllah, this is how they speak. This is how they speak. And they are just gazing at one another and there is no shame at all. Like they are animals. Like they are animals. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the animals with lusts and desires, but there is no reason. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels with reason, but no lust and no desire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the humans with lusts and with reason. So if he follows his lusts, he becomes like an animal. But if he follows his reason, he becomes like the angels. Ikhwani, when you go to these places, these people are just so overcome with lust. It's just like a cattle market. Subhanallah. Look at how seriously the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took this issue of free mixing. If you notice, we're still on the first issue. We haven't even got into watching the movie, subhanallah. Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the best roles for the men are the first roles and the worst roles are the last ones. The best roles for the women are the last roles and the worst roles for the men are the first roles. This hadith is in Muslim and elsewhere, Abu Dawood and At-Tirmidhi. Let's examine this hadith. The best roles for the men are the first roles. The best roles for the women are the last roles. The worst roles for the men are the last roles. And the worst roles for the women are the first roles. Why is that? At the time of the Prophet wasallam, the men used to pray at the front and the women would be behind them. So obviously the men who were in the last rows, they would be close to the women who were in the first rows. Does everyone understand that? Because of the proximity, the men who are at the end are going to be closest to the women who are at the beginning of the first rows for the women. So he said that the worst rows for the women are the first rows. And this was his way of showing us alayhi salatu salam the importance of this segregation and what it leads to. Elsewhere, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in a hadith which is recorded by Imam Ahmad and Abu Dawood, do not prevent the women from visiting the, the, the masajid, the masjids or the mosques of Allah, but they may go out to the mosques having not perfumed themselves. Let's take some points of benefit. Number one, if your wife, your sister, your mother wants to go to the masjid, do not stop her. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, do not prevent the female slaves of Allah from going to the masjids. But there's a condition. They may only go out if they have not perfumed themselves. If they have not perfumed themselves. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us that if a woman leaves her house and she is wearing perfume, then her prayer will not be accepted if she goes to the masjid. But subhanallah, you go to these places, you're standing in the cinema queue, the woman is standing 50 meters away and you can smell her because she's wearing so much perfume. She has just washed herself in her perfume. There is no uh, subtlety about it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, let the women go out to the masjid but make sure they don't perfume themselves. They are going to do something good, they're going to the masjid. 
but they cannot perfume themselves. What about the one who is going to do something evil that is free mixing? On top of that, she has drenched herself in her perfume. This is a big problem. Abu Usaid al Ansari radiallahu an. He says that I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say when he was coming out of the masjid. Picture the scene. Masjid Nabawi, Medina, companions radiallahu anhum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he exits the masjid and he finds that the people are leaving the masjid. But as they are leaving the masjid, instead of the men being on one side and the women on the other side, which they are, they are beginning to congregate near the middle of the road. Elements of men, some men and some women, as they are walking, they are beginning to congregate near the middle of the road. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, he said to them, draw back, for you must not walk in the middle of the road, keep to the sides of the road. So he told the people, draw back, draw back, you must not walk in the middle of the road, rather keep to the sides of the road. And then this companion Abu Usaid al-Ansari radiallahu an, he says, then the women were keeping so close to the sides of the road that their garments were rubbing against the walls as they walked. This hadith is in Abu Dawood. Look at how serious the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became when he saw that men and women were congregating. Because in Islam, it's not a measure of curing the disease or curing the, the problem. Islam rather says prevention is better than cure. So we would rather prevent anything from happening before it even happens, close all of the doors to it altogether. So if anything is going to lead you to haram, that thing itself becomes haram and is forbidden because it is going to lead you to haram. So you cannot congregate in the middle of the road, the Prophet ﷺ said, because it might lead to fitna, it's going to lead to trials and temptations and desires. This is the first thing, the free mixing element of going to these places. We haven't even mentioned sitting in the cinema hall next to a woman, subhanAllah. The next thing, the second issue, is that it's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. How long is the average movie? Is it 20 minutes? No. Is it an hour? No, it's about an hour and a half. An hour and a half of your life, 90 minutes of your life, you sit there and you watch this rubbish. And if you go and you watch an Indian movie, a Bollywood movie, it might be three, four hours. So long that they have an interval in between. And the people bring their samosas and pakoras and they sit there in the interval eating. Subhanallah. Three or four hours of your life have just gone. You went in before Maghrib. You missed Maghrib. You went in before Maghrib. You missed Maghrib. You come out and it's too late to pray Isha as well. Or the boys want to go for Shisha after the cinema. So you go and then you smoke the Shisha. Because all of these things are linked. Once... The shaitan becomes your friend. He will lead you from one station to the next station to the next station. So you watch this movie, then you go and you hit the clubs. Or you hit wherever it might be. You've missed Maghrib. You've missed Isha. You've missed Fajr. And by the time you get home, it's 7, 8 in the morning, you're going to sleep. Do you think you're going to wake up for Dhuhr time? No. So you've missed three or four prayers because of that one evil and the chain reaction that it started. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in a hadith which is in Sahih al-Bukhari. There are two blessings which many people they lose or they don't take the most or they don't make the most of. They are health and free time. Two blessings. Two blessings which people don't make the most of. Their health and their free time. How many times do you hear people say, Akhi, let's do this. I've got some time to kill. What they don't realize is time is killing them and they are not killing time. They say, let's do this and they say, I've got time to kill. Akhi, how do you know that you're going to be alive tonight and you've got time to kill like you're going to live forever? This is a disgusting attitude to have. And yet we go and watch movies for three, four hours. Allahumma stand. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us on the day of resurrection, Yawm Qiyamah, the feet of the son of Adam, me and you, our feet will not move from the places where we are standing until he is questioned about four things. 
You and me, we will not move from our station on Yawm Al-Qiyamah until we are questioned about four things. How he spent his lifetime. That's the first thing. How he spent his youth. How did you make your money and where did you spend your money? And what did you do with your knowledge? Those four things. How he spent his youth. How he spent his lifetime. Where did he get his money from? Where did he spend his money from? What did he do with his knowledge? That knowledge which he acquired. Did he hear that watching movies was haram, going to cinema was haram, and then just disregard it? Because some fool somewhere says, no, it's okay. Ikhwani, the hujjah, the proof against you has been bought now. What I am doing here is establishing proofs against us and against our, ourselves and our, our families and our relatives. If we do not spread this knowledge and act according to this knowledge. You will be asked about your lifetime. You will be asked about your youth. Did you spend your youth every other day watching a movie? Every evening or every Friday night? Make it a habit. Let's go to Star City and sit there and watch a movie. Do this, do that, and it became a habit, and before you knew it, this is how you spent your youth. You were an expert in all of the different movie stars, in all of the different movies, but you knew nothing about the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith which Imam Ahmad rahimahullah recorded, No people sit in a gathering, no people sit in a gathering in which they do not remember Allah, or send blessings upon the Prophet salam, but it will be a source of regret for them on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. You don't sit in any gathering in which Allah is not mentioned, or the Prophet wasallam is not mentioned, or this religion is not mentioned, except on the Day of Judgment is going to be a source of regret for you. Why? Because you're going to say, Ya Laytani, woe to me, why did I waste that much time? And I sat in that gathering and I wasn't even clever enough to mention Allah, to praise Allah, to glorify Allah, to mention the religion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Woe to me, what a waste of time. What a waste of time. And it's going to be a source of regret for that person. No gathering, subhanallah. When you go to the cinema, do you mention Allah? Do you mention his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? No, you don't. Okay, the next thing. Money. Afwan. Okay, money. The Subhanallah, as in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us about money. Where did you get your wealth from? Where are you spending your wealth? Where did you get your wealth from? Where are you spending your wealth? How much is a cinema ticket nowadays? Five pound, ten pound. If you go gold class, twenty-five pound. Ikhwani, this is just a cinema ticket. On top of that, you've got the food. On top of that, you've got the drinks. On top of that, you've got the Maltesers and the nachos and everything else that people buy. Subhanallah, isn't this a waste of money? Imagine where that money could have gone if you had spent it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine what you could have done with that money if you had given it in charity. Imagine on your muqiyama when your deeds are presented to you. When your deeds are presented to you. And you see every last penny that you spent. Is that cinema ticket that you bought going to be on your scale of good deeds? Or is it going to be on your scale of evil deeds? Whoever does an atom's weight of good, he shall see it. And whoever does an atom's weight of evil, he is going to see it on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Is that money going to be a proof for you or is it going to be a proof against you? The fourth thing, we've had three issues so far. 
the free mixing, the waste of time, the waste of money, the fourth thing, linked with the first thing of free mixing. Now we're sat inside the cinema hall. Now we're watching the movie. Now we are watching that stunning lady or that stunning man who is haram for us. Didn't the Prophet wasallam say, your first glance will be forgiven, but the next glance will not be forgiven. Don't try and play games and look and then not blink and say, well, I've only had one glance. This isn't going to work. This is not going to work. You're watching that woman on the TV or that what, you're watching that woman on that uh, cinema screen in front of you. Is she halal for you? Aren't you looking at her? Aren't you repeatedly looking at her? Isn't she dressed in a tempting way? Is this something which is benefiting you? Or is it something which is earning you sin? Because the Prophet ﷺ told us that every single look after that first one you are gaining or you are earning sin. Ikhwani, as Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a, our belief is that our Iman, it rises and it falls. So when we say Subhanallah, when we say Alhamdulillah, when we say Allahu Akbar, our Iman rises just a little bit. When we go and perform Hajj, it rises. When we do Umrah, it rises. When we fast, it rises. We need to work at accumulating our Iman. Slow and steady and raising that Iman in small steps. Now imagine you take that look and you look again and you look again and you look again. With every single sin that you are earning, your Iman is also decreasing. As your Iman decreases, sin becomes more beautiful to you. And the obedience of Allah becomes more difficult to you. Why are you surprised when you can't wake up for Fajr? Why are you surprised when you can't wake up for Qiyam and Layl? When all you do during the day is look at women. Or you look at men who are haram upon you. You sin during the day and then at night you think you can wake up and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaitan has deluded us. The fifth thing, those negative messages which are being portrayed through these movies. Drugs, alcohol, violence, women, fornication, the love of money, chasing money. Are these good, th are these good things? You know, it's like a person throws their children into the river and then thinks that they're not going to get wet. How is it that you take your children to these movies and they sit there and they are being programmed? At home, he plays Grand Theft Auto and he's stealing cars and mowing down people and shooting people. And then you take him to the movies and he watches the same thing. He goes to school and he discusses the same thing with his friends. How is it that you think that your son is going to become somebody pious, a good Muslim, a good citizen, a good person, when all he is surrounded with is evil and violence and drugs and alcohol and fornication? You yourself are sowing the seeds of evil in his heart. You don't sow the seeds of an evil tree and then expect a good pious tree to grow up in its position. Why are we deluding ourselves, Ikhwani? The sixth thing, music. There is not a single moment in these movies except that there is an, a, a, a soundtrack which accompanies that part of that movie. There is a soundtrack which accompanies that part of, move, of, that, of that movie. So now let's examine. You're looking at something haram. So your eyes have done something haram. You have desire in your heart. Your ears are listening to that which is haram. Ikhwani, this whole environment is a place of evil. A place of fitna and fasad. This is the place of shaitan. And then we go and we put ourselves in that environment. Music, there is no doubt, music is haram. Today and right now is not the time and the place to examine the position of music in Islam. But inshallah, maybe we will next time look at Islam according or in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah. But there is no doubt that this element of music is haram. This element of music which accompanies these movies is completely forbidden in Islam. 
The seventh thing, seven issues we've, six issues we've bought so far. Let's look at the seventh issue. It becomes a habit. It becomes a habit. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he advised us as Muslims. He says that when you have a thought, fight that thought. Because if you don't fight the thought, it becomes a desire. When it becomes a desire, engage or hold back that desire. Because if you don't hold that desire back, it's going to become an action. If you don't stop doing that action, it's going to become a habit. And when it becomes a habit, it is very, very difficult to limit. What do they say? Old habits die hard. Old habits die hard. Old habits die hard. If you've been watching movies for 10, 15 years, and it's a regular thing that you and the boys do, on a Friday night, Saturday night, you go and watch movies. Go for a shisha, go to the restaurant, and it's like a routine. It's a routine for you. It's going to be very difficult for you to destroy that habit, to curb that habit. Just as when somebody smokes, you find that they smoke, and then subhanAllah, when they quit smoking, they need something to do with their fingers. Because they're so used to putting that fag in their mouth, that subhanAllah, now they need to occupy their fingers. Why? Because the habit. Old habits die hard. The same thing with going to the cinema watching movies. Don't think that you're going to sit at home at night downloading movies onto your PC, watching them. And then being thinking that you're a, you're a hard man or you're cool amongst your friends because your friends went to the cinema and you downloaded it at home. Subhanallah. Allahum stand. Okay, the next issue. We find that if you went to this cinema hall and you, <laughs> you went to this cinema hall and you said to the people, everybody stand up. And subhanallah, uh, Star City has a very big cinema hall, five, six hundred people. Five, six hundred people stand up. Everybody stands up. And you say, right. Now, those of you who are married, leave the cinema hall. If there was 500 people left, 10 people would leave. 490 of them would be girlfriend and boyfriend. 490, the vast majority of them, would be girlfriend, would be boyfriend. You smile because you know I'm telling the truth. The vast majority of them would be girlfriend, boyfriend, first date, second date, third date. We're getting married so it doesn't matter if we're dating. I don't know how many dates we've had. More dates than Ramadan, Allahumma sta'an. Right? They're on a date. They're on a date. He's looking at the woman on the cinema screen. The desire is being aroused in his heart. He's going to take that desire out on your sister, your mother, your daughter. Ikhwani, these things are happening in our society. The desire is roused and then they go and they fornicate after the movie. They go and their private parts, as the Prophet wasallam told us, their private parts testify to that desire which has been raised up in their hearts because of what they see. Because of what they see. It's become something normal. I want to ask her out. Where do I take her? If I take her to the restaurant, maybe my dad will walk in. If I take her to Nando's, I might see my family members. If I take her to Sheikh Khan, there's too many Muslims in there. Allah stand. I feel shy. I know I'll take her somewhere dark. I'll take her somewhere where nobody can see us. I'll take her to the cinema. I can put my arm around her when she gets scared. I'll break the ice, you know. She's scared, so I say, hey honey, come here. And I put my arm around her. The Prophet ﷺ said, I would rather have nails be driven through me than touch the hands or touch a woman who I am not allowed to touch. And he's just gone and he's put his arm around her. That's the ice broken. 
That's it. The element of touch has been broken. Next, they go to the next stage, and the next stage, and the next stage, until they are fornicating openly. Allah Musta'an. Okay. Disregard everything I've said. Disregard the first eight points. He's chatting rubbish, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Disregard everything. Doesn't happen with me, I take my wife to the, I take my wife to the cinema. I've got loads of money, so I can spend that money, I give all that money in charity. You know, I put my hands in my ears when the music comes on. I lower my gaze, I sit there like this, when the female's on the screen, and I ask my wife, has she gone yet? And then she says yes, and then I look. What else? The negative messages, alhamdulillah, my aqidah is strong, I can watch movies. Uh, it's a habit? No, it's not a habit. Alhamdulillah, I've got plenty of good habits. This is just a, a vice, as they say. I'm not doing drugs, I'm not, smoking, I'm not smoking cigarettes, I'm not drinking alcohol. No, this is just a vice, you know, you've got to have a vice, akhi. Come on, why are, you being a, why are you being an extremist for? Yeah? Disregard everything I've said, the final point. You play with your religion at your own destruction or at your own peril, ikhwani. You watch these movies, you play with your own religion. Wallahi, don't come on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and say, nobody told me. Don't come on Yawm Al-Qiyamah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels, خُذُوهُ فَغُلُّوا ثُمَّ الْجَحِيمَ صَلُّوا Seize them and fetter them and then throw them in the fire of Jahannam. Don't say, Allah, nobody told me. I'm telling you right now. I'm passing the message over to you right now. These movies make a mockery of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They make a mockery of his religion. They make a mockery of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And know that with the consensus of the scholars, if you mock Islam, if you mock any element of this religion, you have disbelieved. You have disbelieved by the consensus of the Muslim scholars. Because you have mocked Islam. What's my proof for this? What's my proof for making such a heavy statement? Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah at tawbah Surah Tawbah. Surah number 9, ayah number 65 and 66. Go away, check it for yourself. Read the tafsir. Read the tafasir of the different ulama. Read them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you ask them, they declare, we were only talking idly, we were talking idly and we were joking. Say, was it at Allah, his ayat and his messenger that you were mocking? Make no excuse, you have disbelieved after your belief. Why was this ayah revealed? Why were these two ayahs revealed? Ibn Umar radiallahu an Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu an This is in the tafsir of Ibn Jarir Abdullah ibn Umar he narrates that a man was sat amongst some people these people they said that they were Muslims these people claimed that they were Muslims the battle of Tabuk the Battle of Tabuk, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he went out with some of his companions. He went out with some of his companions and these men, they were sat around a fire. One of them said, or a few of them said, you know, this Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, we have never seen people who eat more than they do. They eat so much. They tell lies and they're cowardly. You know, we've never seen people who eat so much as, the, as these Qur'an readers, referring to the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. We've never seen people who eat more than these people do. Or tell more lies than this Muhammad ﷺ and his companions. Or they are more cowardly in battle than these Muslims. A man said, he stood up from amongst them and he said, You are lying and you are a hypocrite. Wallahi, I am going to tell the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what you have just said. So he went and he told the Messenger of Allah what this man was saying. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. He says, I saw with my own two eyes that man who had said this, 
He was hanging on to the camel of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Prophet alayhi salam was continued riding. And the man was saying, "Ya Rasulullah, we were only joking. We were only mocking. We didn't mean any of it. We were only talking idly, Ya Rasulullah. It was only a joke. We didn't mean it." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued riding. He continued riding, didn't stop, and then he recited these ayat. Was it at Allah and his ayat and his messengers that you were mocking? Make no mistake, you have disbelieved after your belief. And the Prophet ﷺ never accepted the tawbah of that man. Because he mocked at the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhwani, Bruce Almighty, who's, who knows about that film? Bruce Almighty, raise your hands. I know about that film. Bruce Almighty, a black man plays Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a black man plays God. Is it acceptable for a Muslim whose aqeedah is sound and his aqeedah is correct, who has his mind and he has his intellect, to sit there and watch as this man is playing God? ليس كمثله شيء. There is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa taala. ما قدر الله حق قدره. They have not estimated Allah subhanahu wa taala the way He deserves to be. And we say we were just mocking. You were mocking. You took it lightly. You paid money which you have worked for. You paid the money for the cinema ticket and you went and you sat there for two hours and you didn't say anything. You just sat there. Rather you laughed while this man played Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Was it at Allah and his signs and his messengers that you were mocking? Make no mistake, you have disbelieved after your belief. Passion of the Christ. Where they whip. Isa alayhi salam or a man who is supposed to be Isa alayhi salam, Jesus. And they whip him like a donkey. And you sit there and you watch. Was it at Allah and his ayat and his messengers that you were mocking? Make no mistake, you have disbelieved after your disbelief, after your belief. Ikhwani, and you say, no, I don't agree. I don't, I was just sat there. If that is not your tacit approval, if that is not your approval of what you watch, the fact that you sat there, you paid your money and you gave two hours of your time to watch it and you never stood up and walked out, I don't know what your approval is. What is your approval if you paid your money and you watched? And then you say, this is not my approval. Make no mistake, Ikhwani, you were mocking at Allah and his signs and his ayat and his messengers. Now we have... What's his name? Ali G. What's that movie that he's just released? What's that movie called? Dictator. The Dictator. That Khabith. And he is nothing short of a dog. If you look at the billboards, look at the billboards. Is there any other nation? Is there any other nation except for the Muslims? Except for the Muslims who allow their beards to grow and trim their mustaches. The Muslims are the only nation, the Sikhs, they allow their beards to grow, but their mustaches grow over their top lips as well. So much so they can't even feed themselves. Khair, inshallah, we're not even talking about that. Okay? The dictator, he has a big beard, he has trimmed his mustache. His name in the movie is General Aladdin. What do we call, what do the uh, people who, their Arabic is not there on their tongue, what do they call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Don't they call him Allah? What do we call our religion? Don't we call it Deen? General Aladdin. General Aladdin, the dictator, is the name of the movie. Muslim men and Muslim women all over the UK when this movie was released. Hey, what are you doing tonight? Should we go and watch this movie? And they paid their money. They gave their time. They 
incurred other sins as well and they went and they sat there while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while his religion while his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were mocked at and they sat there and your silence is your approval your silence is your approval and don't come to me with rubbish that well I'm not in a position to stop it didn't the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that stop it with your hands if you can't do that then speak out against it and if you can't do that then curse it in your heart who was forcing you to watch that movie who forced you to pay your money and sit there for two hours while the Allah and his religion were mocked Ikhwani, make no mistake you have disbelieved after your belief and I'm not saying that you've watched these movies you're a kafir but this is a call for us to reflect on our own selves don't play with your religion don't sell your religion don't sell your akhirah for such a measly gain don't sell yourself and your children for such a measly game save yourself and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stones don't say kids kids shall we go and watch the dictator you might as well say kids light a fire and we will all jump into that fire together ikhwani this is a very serious issue movies cinema etc don't play with your religion don't waste your time don't waste your money don't make it a habit don't incur the sin of listening to music and looking at women and free mixing all of this evil upon evil upon evil is there any reward for good except for good is there any reward for evil except for evil Ikhwani, this is a reminder to myself and to you brothers and sisters and if it doesn't apply to you if Allah has saved you from this fitna then it's upon you to take this to those people who are struggling to those people who are falling into this sin it's upon you to deliver this message because perhaps they will understand this message better than you understand it and ultimately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk